Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habita fillah It's important as a reminder to myself and my brothers and sisters in Islam the importance of uh, adhering to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in all of our ibadat and in fact in all of our life and this is something we need to remind ourselves from uh, about and it becomes a cliche so many people say adhere to the sunnah follow the sunnah uh, be upon the sunnah all kind of uh, ways of making it uh, seem trivial or did you pray your sunnah rakats or whatever the case may be but it's very important if we really reflect that our Islam is based solely on those divine sources, the divine source of the Qur'an, which is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, which shows us the meaning, the explanation of the Qur'an and how to implement the Qur'an in our lives. So it has two, uh, two ways of illustrating this, these important points. And so with that being the case, I just wanted to read a couple of ayat from our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when we reflect upon it, this is from Allah Azza wa Jal. This is our Lord, the one we worship, the one for those of us who have left disbelief to come to belief. We bow before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The reason we still are Muslim is because of our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, his guidance, and because we believe that there is no one worthy of worship except the law, and so we worship him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That keeps us grounded, it keeps us focused. And when we reflect upon that, we'll see that in every aspect of our life that worship, we should be conscious of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that that worship should take precedence and that means being conscious that you have a Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala who's watching you and try to worship him in the best of ways. As uh, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in the Hadith of Jibreel about what it means to have ihsan. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, in ta'budullaha ka'annaka tara fa'in lam tukun tarahu fa'innuhu yaraq. He said it's to worship Allah as if you see him. But because you don't see him, know that he sees you. And Ahabat Tifillah, we also must follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's Islam. As a great imam, a classical scholar, Imam al-Babahari, he mentioned, Rahmatullah alayhi rahmatullah wasiya, he said al-Islam, that Islam is the Sunnah and the Sunnah is Islam. And so also it requires that we know and understand if we want our deeds accepted by Allah that we have to have sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our worship and we have to follow the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam in how we worship. The kayfiyah, how, how it's going to be performed in practice. We can't just say, you know, I'm going to pray and I'm going to pray in any way. I'm going to pray to Abdul Qadir Jailani. I'm going to pray at the grave of my dead grandmother. I'm going to go to the saint of our village and sacrifice something to his grave or pray in the masjid where his grave is uh inside, or I'm going to sacrifice to such and such. I'm going to do an act of ibadah to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, thinking I'm going to come closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. That's not going to cut it. That is shirk, and that will take you out of the fold of Islam. So listen to a couple of uh, ayat from Allah Azza wa Jal, showing us the importance of the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, why we should give it precedence, why we should not think take these things lightly, that we have to have sincerity to Allah and we have to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that takes ilm. It takes knowledge of what Allah commands and what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did and commanded sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Qala Allah ta'ala fi kitabi al-kareem 
وما اتاكم الرسول فخذوه وما ناهكم عنه فانتهوا الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتاب الكريم and what the messenger came with uh, then accept it take it and what he prohibited or prohibited you from avoid it so there Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is letting us know that we need to follow the awamir al nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam the commands of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and leave off the things that the messenger alayhi salatu wasallam prohibited and hated sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa qala ta'ala وَمَا يَنْتَقُوا عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُحَىٰ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem in Surah Al-Najm, verse 403, He subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And he does not speak from his desires. Verily, it is a revelation which was revealed. Meaning the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wasn't a person of, of, of desires and bid'ah, okay? He wasn't coming up with something new from himself, but rather he was implementing and he was articulating what Allah Azza wa Jal commanded him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to do. And that the Sunnah is Wahi. The Sunnah is a type of revelation. And this differs between Ahl Sunnah and some of the other groups on how they look at the, the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you see even movements today of people trying to belittle the Sunnah and destroy the Sunnah so that way they can practice their desires in accordance with just taking some ayat to try to uh, affirm their creed and affirm their belief system and affirm their ideology and affirm their bid'ah and deviance. وَعِيَادٍ بِاللَّهِ وَإِيَّاكُمْ مِنْ بِدْعَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, قُلْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتْعَبِعُونِ يُحْبِبُكُمُ اللَّهِ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبُكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, in Surah Al-Ali Imran, verse 31, he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, قُلْ سَيْ if, and this was for the Prophet ﷺ to tell the people, to tell the, the people so that they could follow him, so that they knew he was a messenger, والسلام, that he was a messenger of Allah وسلم, who was sent by Allah to give the message to the people, the message of Tawheed, the message of, of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, and the message to warn the people away from shirk and what would cause them punishment. وَعِيَادٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكِ So he's, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, say, uh, so the message, he commanded the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to say, إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ If you love Allah, then follow me, meaning follow the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. يُحْبِبُكُمُ اللَّهِ Allah will love you. وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبُكُمْ And he will forgive you of your sins. What do we take away from that ayah? We take away that one, that if we follow the sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam, Allah will love us. The second thing is that if we follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will forgive us of our sins. So that shows us that that's the Surat Al-Mustaqeen, that's the straight path. And there are so many ayat that mention this. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in Kitab Al-Kareem, فَإِنْتَ نَزَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْرٍ فَرُدُوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ That if, uh, if you disagree over something, then where do you return it to? Where should we return our affairs when we have fitna between Ahlul Sunnah? We have fitna when we have a discord with uh, Ahlul Bid'ah? When Ahlul Kufr wa Zandaka uh, attacks Ahlul Sunnah or attacks the Muslims? Where do we return to? But this ayat is talking about when there's discord, discord between the believers. فَإِنْتَ نَزَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْنٍ فَرُدُوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ if you disagree over something, if you're arguing about something, some issue, return it to Allah and His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Return it to Allah means return it to the Quran, the Book of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Return it to the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, means turn it to the Sunnah of the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam. Because we don't pray to the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam, but rather we follow the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam. That's what we do. That's what we're ordered to do.
And there are so many ayat which illustrate this important point of following the son of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So I just wanted to remind myself and my brothers and sisters in Islam with the same, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, on the Nabi Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.